Greetings, uh, this is Tales from the Jails with John G. Sutton. That's me, by the way. Yeah, I'm going to talk today about uh, problems in the prison service. Really? Yeah. Mm, some governors have been locked up. Well, they've been arrested, charged, and they're down for trial at Crown Court. Uh, one of them is Peter Nichols of Wormwood Scrubs, who was the corruption prevention manager. Pity that, isn't it? Corruption prevention manager at Wormwood Scrubs. Now awaiting trial for under the Misuse of Computers Act. Also found cocaine on his uh, on his premises with his wife, who was also a governor. Keep it in the family, eh, folks? Keep it in the family. She's been charged under the same offence, misuse of computers. Uh, she was a governor at HMP Feltham, which is a young offenders unit, and another member of the prison staff at the Scrubs called Gareth Casella. Mm. Uh, quite what they've been doing. I mean, it'll be obtaining information about inmates and uh, using it for their own nefarious means. But we'll find out undoubtedly when it gets to court and they're innocent until proven guilty folks but I assume that they will be found guilty if they are found guilty then they'll be in the prison system except on the other side of the door on the other side of the door that's what's waiting for you you smuggle it in you get in the bin Anyway, that's that, that's what's going to happen. Isn't it? Yeah, well, I still believe it is. You see that yesterday, eight police or eight police officers dismissed for, for passing round revolting, horrible messages to each other. They had like a chat group going, in which they had the audacity to criticise the handicapped child of Katie Price. I mean, no matter what you think about Katie Price, I don't know the woman at all. I'm no little of it. You know, it's not my kind of thing to. Bother about that, but the, the the young man is is disabled, profoundly disabled. You do not mock the disabled. It's a sign of <laughs> stupidity. Uh, yeah. Anyway, they've been sacked from the police. Also, seeing Cumbria, uh, a police inspector has been dismissed for sexually molesting his colleagues on a night out. What is the world coming to? And and the the Justice Secretary, Dominic Raab, is now considering instituting prison ships. They used to have prison ships in the 19th century. They called them hulks. Yeah. And they, they were, a lot of them were holed up on the Thames down, down by Woolwich. Yeah. And uh, the, the disgraceful things. I mean, there's no exercise, no walking around in the fresh air properly. You're banged up in, in a cell on a, on, a, on a ship. Yeah. So that's what they're going to do. Because the prison system apparently is at virtually at capacity. I believe there's 85,000 inmates. And the, and the judges are not long, no longer sentencing people to imprisonment because there's nowhere to send them. Uh, they're also, I mean, <clears throat> they're going to institute the idea of virtual prisons, whereby, <clears throat> you know, you've got to wear a tag and you've got the GPS <clears throat> following you around. You have restricted movement, so you're virtually imprisoned in your own home. That makes a lot more sense to me because it means that you can work so you don't lose your job if you get sentenced to imprisonment and it doesn't destroy your family life. Because a lot of people get sent to prison, they're in prison for say two years. They come out, they've got not the family, the family's disintegrated. The wife's gone off somewhere else. Uh, the neighbours don't want to know them, and uh, they've lost the job. So what do they do? They're sleeping rough. Next thing you know, they're back inside. A cycle of, of deprivation, so to speak, and and it becomes a, a repeat offender, a recidivist. So anyway, that's what I was talking about today, about uh, prison governors committing offences. It's not long since we had that prison governor who was a female. I think she was 46 years old or something. She was having an, what they delicately term an inappropriate relationship with a prisoner. In other words, 
entertaining herself. Yeah, and she got uh, sentenced to, I think it was two years, something like 30 months, I think, anyway. That ruined her life, embarrassed her family completely. She'll be ostracised when she comes out. She won't be able to re-enter society properly. So what's, what's the rehabilitation programme there? Uh, HMP Burwain, yeah, near near in Wales, yeah. I think it's nine members of staff have been imprisoned for inappropriate relations with inmates, eight of them being females. The idea of putting young girls to work on the landings in the in the in the male prisons is insanity. And the only reason that these girls are doing it is because it's easy work for them, easy. All they've got to do is turn up, yeah? Because they can't actually do the job, can they? You can't get their hands onto a big angry man. Can't do that. Well, they get hands on him inappropriately. Uh, so basically, that they're using women because they're cheap, easy to, to hire. You know, if you want a job as a prison officer, go and knock on the gate, you know. Assuming that you've not just been discharged from Wormwood Scrubs, you're straight in. Or maybe you, even if you have been, I mean, we've got some brilliant ex, uh, examples here. Peter Nichols, um, prison governor at Wormwood Scrubs, corruption prevention manager awaiting trial. Janice Nichols, governor at HMP Feltham, Young Offenders Unit, awaiting trial. Gareth Casella, member of the prison staff, Wormwood Scrubs, awaiting trial. What, where's it all going to end? It's an, it's, it's never-ending cycle, is it? I despair. Now, and, oh, I was in uh, the, the prison system. It was extremely rare to see a, a prison officer charged. They weren't. Occasionally, yes. I mean, I, I could probably... Uh, name the, the people that were charged because it is that few but nowadays it's every damn month and policemen getting d dismissed from the service and getting charged with sexually molesting their colleagues unheard of my father was a detective inspector he treated the job with a great deal of respect and it was a calling in a way he, he, he did that not just for the money but he actually thought he was doing something good for society no matter how misguided that might be. But uh, he actually did believe that. And that's only going back to the 1950s, 1960s. Mind you, that's a different world, isn't it? 70 years ago. Yeah, here we go. I'm going to sing you a song now. I know you don't deserve it. I mean, that was terrible yesterday. The sound of silence. You'd have been better off with silence, wouldn't you? I'm going to sing to you now, though. This is a song... Johnny Cash sang this, yeah. Chris Christopherson, I used to have the recording of Chris Christopherson. I think Christopherson wrote this, actually. It's Sunday morning coming down. So all you Jack Daniels fans out there, get ready. This is how it feels in the morning. Well, I woke up Sunday morning With no way to hold my head that didn't hurt And the beer I had for breakfast wasn't bad so I had one more for dessert. Then I fumbled in my closet, through my clothes, found my cleanest dirty shirt. Then I washed my face, combed my hair, and stumbled down the stairs to meet the day. I'd smoked my mind the night before with cigarettes and songs that I'd been picking. So I lit my first and watched a small kid playing with a can that he was kicking. Then I walked across the street and caught the Sunday smell of someone frying chicken. And it took me back to something that I had lost somewhere, somehow along the way. On that Sunday morning sidewalk, I'm wishing, Lord, that I was stoned. Cause there's something in a Sunday makes a 
everybody feel alone And there's nothing short of dying That's half as lonesome as the sound Of a sleeping city sidewalk Sunday morning coming down In the park I saw a daddy With a laughing little girl that he was swinging and I stopped beside a Sunday school and listened to the songs that they were singing. Then I headed down the street and somewhere far away a lonely bell was ringing. And it echoed through the canyon like the disappearing dreams of yesterday. On a Sunday morning sidewalk I'm wishing, Lord, that I was stoned Cause there's something on a Sunday That makes a body feel alone And there's nothing short of dying Half as lonesome as the sound Of a sleepy city sidewalk And a Sunday morning coming down there you go so all you Jack Daniels fans out there Sunday morning I'll see you there Tales from the Jails